<laughs> All right. How is everybody doing today? Welcome to the live stream. Matthias, how the heck are you doing, sir? I'm very well, and I'm really, really happy to be here. Uh, thanks oh. for having me on the show. How are you? Well, I, I am uh, so excited because this is something uh, we started chatting about like a few months ago when this was first being announced. And I'm so excited that, to finally have you on the show because I want to learn all about TMDL. But hang on, before we dive into all of that stuff, I want to uh, like get to know the people who have tuned into the show. Um, you know, we see a whole bunch of people have started to stream in. Why don't you why don't you post inside the channel because your interactions matter. We want to answer your questions. We want to help you out. Why don't you give us a heads up? Like, uh, have you or uh, let's see, what can we do? Um, what's your favorite food? Let's understand where do you guys like to eat? What you know? What what's your favorite food, Matthias? What's your favorite food? What's your go-to? I'm not very much of a foodie, I have to say. No? Okay. <laughs> um, um, but I do enjoy a really good burger. Uh, and whenever oh. I, I go to the States, that's definitely what I'm taking advantage of there. Because uh, you can definitely get the best ones over there. That's for sure. Oh, fantastic. Have you had an egg? Or I'm sorry, have you had a burger with a fried egg on it before? Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, my. Lanta, ah, it is fantastic. Uh, uh, I highly recommend if if they have that as an option at your burger place, you try okay. it out. It's it's unbelievably good. Um, oh, and we have uh, uh, Alt Enter is coming in. She is loving anything sweet or uh, uh, maybe sushi here. So uh, excited to have all these people. Uh, and Bernat is here too. So. Uh, awesome. 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 All right. Um, so this is a lunch and learn. We want to get into that. Um, uh, Matthias, can you just tell the audience? Cause I'm not sure if everyone knows you like they should, what, what's your background? Where are you from? What do you do? How'd you get into this thing called technology and data? Woo, that, uh, how much time do we have? Um, <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it short. Okay, so I, I live in London, uh, but I'm German originally. So I came over here some 14 years ago or so. Um, okay. And uh, my career actually started in, in software development and software engineering. Uh, oh. And uh, I, I, I sort of found myself more or less by accident uh, in the BI world. Uh, and um, I ha I happened to, to get into BI just as Power BI was becoming a thing. So I've pretty much been there more or less sort of by chance from the very first days of Power BI. And uh, uh, I've certainly installed many, many different versions of Power BI Desktop uh, in my lifetime now. <laughs> um, and um, um and the rest is history uh so <laughs> um I'm, I'm currently running a, a data management and analytics team um at yougov in london um where we heavily use power bi uh i'm the guy who actually brought uh, power bi into the company so i'm mr power bi at yougov um <laughs> all right and uh, uh that was a a big bet in the beginning because uh, we're talking to 2016 2017 right so oh, really sure. early days um but um yeah it uh, it it went from a from a one man show to to a sizable team where I'm today and uh, you can see uh Microsoft and Power BI have definitely sort of helped uh, me getting there right um and then the final thing which could help sort of lead into the topic um Ever sort of, let's say for the last 15 years or so, I've been absolutely passionately interested in all things automation and deployment and CICD. Even before um, I actually got into BI, that was one of my sort of special topics. And, and I was uh, uh, sort of setting up CICD pipelines a lot. Um, and uh, then uh, sort of found myself in 2017 with mm -hmm. Power BI early days. You remember, right? Oh, and there was yeah. nothing but a black box binary PBX file, right? So, yeah. uh, and that was not something I was quite sort of 
uh, happy with. So I ended up I ended up creating PBI tools um, to um, crack open the PBIX file and actually sort of make it, you know, intelligible and and uh, compatible with source control and and help me automate deployments and all of that and. Yeah, so that that's ultimately what mm. what's going to lead us to uh, Timda, what what we want to talk about today. Well, I, I am so excited about it, and it it completely makes sense that someone with the software development background said, you know what, this language we have to write in uh, the tabular language and model is insufficient for my needs, and um, uh, but that's a great entryway. Uh, this is a, a lunch and learn, so you have that right. Uh, before we head over to our desktop, we always either grab a bite to eat like Donald is doing, uh, or uh, for those of us on the live stream, we grab a, a drink and then we take a drink and then we head into it. So uh, let's all together raise a glass. Cheers. Cheers. Then, before we head into it. Because it's late in the day, I'm on decaf now, but um, oh. uh, the taste is almost the same. All right. Awesome. <laughs> all right. So let's talk. Timdal. Uh -huh. Um, Right. So, yeah, I've just got a, a quick summary about myself here. Um, pretty much said everything already. But uh, if you want to, if you're not already following me, let's put it that way. Um, find me on, on Twitter or LinkedIn. Uh, the links are on this slide. Um, or go to my YouTube um, playlist. Um, uh, which is the link right at the bottom that has almost 40 uh, recordings of sessions, tutorials, live streams I've, I've been doing so far um, around PPI tools and source control. And, and um, as of uh, late, um, uh, Timdal as well. Um, so Timdal is, is a new language. Uh, for 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 model development, and it's it's specifically designed to actually help anyone who w wants to, to who who wants to basically tackle BI and 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 tabular projects like software projects. Uh, you know, with all the bells and whistles, with all the sort of enterprise features, with with all the goodness that you get from source control and from having uh, a, a branching and diffs and uh, being able to uh, deploy things in an automated fashion. Um, that, that's basically what Timdal uh, is addressing because, and this is what this slide is about, before Timdal, we weren't quite there, right? I alluded to that already before. Um, we did have uh, a, and we still do today, uh, a declarative format um, uh, for tabular models, which is a JSON based. And uh, uh, lots of folks have probably heard of BIM files, right? BIM. So that, that's what we're talking about here. Um, so we, we, we have that as a declarative language, but it has a lot of limitations. Um, uh, particularly if you want to collaborate in a team, you know, if multiple people want to make changes in parallel and you want to merge them, all of that, th that JSON format doesn't quite work. Um, and um, so over the years, some external tools have come come up, Tablet Editor in particular. Um, I mentioned PBI tools. Uh, we also have ALM Toolkit um, from Christian. Um, uh, who all sort of address sort of little uh, bits of, of the whole process, but we've never had a proper story from, from the Microsoft Power BI product team um, for, for those pro developers, as they call them, right? Um, sure. And, um, and, um, and that's changed big time uh, uh, over the last f four to five weeks, basically, particularly in the context of fabric announcements. And so Timdal is, is, is not the whole solution, but Timdal is very, very indicative in terms of where things are going, in terms of um, highlighting that there's a whole new openness and approach um, to addressing those kind of personas uh, within a product team. And so if, if I move on here, 
and we're looking, we're doing a side by side, we can actually see very nicely how Tyndall helps us um, overcoming uh, the the limits um, of Timsel, right? So we're looking at a snippet of Timsel, so a, a bit of JSON. In this case, we can see how um, two columns are defined. Uh, there's a lot of noise here, lots of stuff uh, necessary to, to get sort of the message across. If I move over and look at um, the, look at a corresponding Timnal file, we can see um, there is everything, everything is, is much, much more concise, right? It's actually readable, right? This is designed to be looked at and read by humans rather than just by machines. Um, it, so, so that was one aspect. The second one is, and that's a really big one, um, professional developers, uh, they want to be able to use any editor there is. And there are lots of really good text editors out there, uh, Visual Studio Code in particular, right? Um, the, uh, professional developers don't want to have to uh, fire up uh, Power BI Desktop only to make one small tiny edit, right? Only to, to, to sort of fix uh, a small typo or so, right? Uh, by the time you've loaded a, a, a big PBX project, uh, uh, you know what I mean, right? And so um, theoretically, in the old world of Tinsel, you could have done edits in a text editor, but this this we're looking at a DAX expression here. Does it look like a DAX expression to you? Um, not really, because no. there's a lot of stuff in there that gets in the way, right? Uh, we, we've got these extra quotes and commas and um, and all of that. Um, and um, moving over, you get you, sort of you get the point, right? In Tyndall, anything that's a DAX expression is a DAX expression. You can actually uh, copy paste them into DAX Studio and run them. There's nothing gets in the way, right? So that's the second thing, and it applies to M expressions as well. Um, and then thirdly, um, uh, in in our JSON world, um, we Unless, unless you were using tabular editor, but that was sort of a, a proprietary um, one single tool solution, um, you ended up with one very large file with everything in it, right? And you can actually see that in, in this small screenshot here, we're looking at a relatively trivial model, right? So this is a very simple right. composer model. We can already see sort of four digit line numbers, right? So the whole thing um, gets blown up uh, and, and everything is uh, merged together into one file. If you then want to consider um, co-editing and, and parallel working and people changing something in this table and someone else changes something in that table, it's going to be a mess, right? It's, it's going to be really problematic. So again, moving over here, um, Timdo gives us not just an, a new way, uh, a new format, how um, tables and measures and columns are defined. It also, by default, splits your entire model um, into a standard folder structure so that we actually uh, work with much smaller files, each file having a clear purpose and having a clear scope, what they are responsible for. And um, if you... Uh, if you know, if if one person wants to make edits to to the customer table and another person wants to make edits to the sales table, as we can see in the example, there would be absolutely no overlap and there would be no conflict whatsoever, right? So that's the third yeah. thing, really. Um, and um, yeah, so it's so pretty much. I'll, I'll stop here, right? So it's 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 those three. It's those three um, sort of qualities, uh, readable, editable, and collaborative. Uh, that is actually what what Tindo gives us and, and, and uh, what we were hoping to achieve here. Well, I mean, that's absolutely fantastic. I think this last one, this collaborative phase of being able to have many developers that are working together on, on common issues or items, I think is one of the biggest reasons why, like, um, uh, we've been looking for, you know, more modern solutions. And um, I, I do want to hit on one thing I, I forgot uh, before we go much further. Uh, 
we are all here to answer your questions. So we have a few rules. Uh, these are the Roche rules. Uh, Roche rule one, uh, please prefix any questions you have with a queue so we can get those queued up. Matthias is agreed he'll answer them. Uh, and rule number two, uh, please don't repeat any questions. Um, it, it just gets annoying and spam is bad, right? People don't like that. But uh, we are here to answer your questions. So please post those inside of the chat, okay? Um, but to summarize the observation or, or what I'm seeing at or thinking about when, when I see this is, oh, what just happened? Why did you do that? Don't do that. <gasps> Where'd you go? Why? Is you... Oh, there we go. Okay. So I love when I look at, or I've had a challenge when I look at TMSL in, in knowing how I would work and manage that, especially when I think about how I could potentially dynamically generate that TMDL, mm -hmm. that looks really hard. But when I look at the TMDL, when I think about working with many different team members and then, like I said, potentially uh, generically managing that or automatically generate it, that looks much easier. Is that something that was in your mind as you're starting to build this? Is that ability to allow for the automated generation of this stuff, of this code? Uh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, also, we, we should, because we're using acronyms a lot here, we should mm -hmm. probably uh, just take a moment. <laughs> uh, so TMSL, or mm -hmm. as people inside Microsoft uh, tend to call it TIMSL, that's the tabular model scripting language, um, which came out with the 1200 uh, compatibility mode in um, uh, tabular models. So that was... Uh, I think it was SQL Server 2016, if I remember correctly. Um, so a long time ago, uh, TMDL is the tabular model definition language. Um, um, so, and um, it didn't take long for someone uh, to pretty much coin uh, Tyndall uh, <laughs> as, the, <laughs> uh, uh, as, as the very cute abbreviation here. So yeah, I like it. I use it. Some people okay. don't like it. Uh, there we go. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah. So so that's that. And I think it's it's quite um, it's quite a good name because it's very descriptive. It's uh, it's saying exactly what it does, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, it it defines everything that's in your model, uh, you know, with respect to tabular models, uh, and and that's the whole point. Uh, Timsel is called Timsel because um, uh, it, in addition to actually defining the model structure, it also mm -hmm. has commands, right? It has things like um, create and uh, drop and and uh, refresh, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's that's where the scripting bit is coming from. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. So, that makes tons of sense. Uh, we have three questions. I'm going to actually post them out of order because I think sure. these questions are going to, if I post them in the proper order, will lead you to the next thing that you're going to talk about. So right. uh, hopefully we, we could be good with this. Uh, Amanda over on LinkedIn is asking, regarding the organization into different files, where are the measured stores? On the tables where they were placed or in their own files? It's almost like she knows uh, what my next slide has. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So if, if you so don't mind. Let's head on over. <laughs> um, very nice. So um, as I alluded to, you know, with re respect to Timnal being collaborative, um, Timnal also ships with a default folder structure um, that uh, looks like this. Um, so basically, uh, all your tables um, are uh, stored in in a, in a dedicated file. So one file for each table, and and they come up in um, uh, in, in a subfolder called tables. Um, the same applies to cultures, data sources, and roles. I, I don't have examples for data sources and roles here, but. Uh, uh, it's the same story. And then everything else sits in um, single files, expressions, relationships. Um, uh, they are all combined in one file and um, uh, model contains everything else pretty much. Uh, so pretty much stuff sort of at the at the root level. And as far as tables are concerned, um, Virtually everything that relates to a table, so that's answering the question now, hopefully. Everything that relates to a table um, 
shows up in that particular file. So for my customer table, everything is in customer.tmd. And obviously, I'm going to show an example very soon. Um, and within that file, we actually have a standardized order. Uh, so it's not arbitrary. It's not random. Uh, it's always partitions first, then measures, then columns, then hierarchies, then um, annotations, then extended properties and, and other things that um, most people normally don't even notice. Um, and so uh, that allows complete um, uh, predictability with respect to, you know, how, in which order stuff actually shows up. And uh, what was the other thing I was gonna, uh, oh uh, yeah, right. Uh, so. Shall we go and look at uh, an example? Or you, I think you said you had two more questions. So, Do you so think yes, that... yeah. Let, let me add, let, let's go to those questions because well, uh, again, uh, I think this will then lead to the next thing. Uh, so <laughs> Donald Parrish had asked, um, "Hey, I uh, hope you have a Tyndall extension for VS Code ready." Um, yeah, very good. Uh, we actually just talked about that at length yesterday. Um, awesome. Um, so, yes, yeah. so basically uh, we announced Tyndall to the world on mm -hmm. April 11th, if I remember correctly, uh, during SQL Bits. Um, yep. I had the uh, uh, great pleasure of uh, doing that uh, jointly with... Um, uh, um, Rui? Uh, no, unfortunately not Rui. Uh, it oh. was, um, it, it should have been Rui because he's actually the PM, but um, okay. he, uh, he wasn't able to travel to SQL Bits. Um, oh goodness, I'm, I'm having a very awkward <laughs> and unfortunate mind blank right now. Uh, it, it was, it, I'm so sorry, a, a really lovely lady from the CAT team. I'm sure her name is going to come back to me in a second or so. Well, if you're um, online right now watching, uh, leave a comment that, uh, if, if you know her name, uh, uh yes, and... <laughs> this is very embarrassing. Um, but it, it, it's one of my massive flaws. I, I simply cannot for the life of me, I can cannot remember names. Um, I can remember numbers and dates and, and all of that, right? I no. never forget them, but uh, I'm absolutely um, horrible um, with names. Um, cool. So yeah, we announced things um, and got quite a, a bit of excitement and feedback and all of that. And so some of the thing, uh, one of the things we talked about was um, VS Code extension, and we promised it um, to everyone. Now, uh, there have been a few delays. However, um, uh, this is, uh, where are we now? Uh, 21st of June. Um, I'm, I'm pretty positive that uh, by mid-July, that's going to be out, because it's currently awaiting uh, the next drop of the Tom libraries, which um, is scheduled for early July. And right after that, the VS Code extension should come out. It's it's basically ready, as you know, for sort of for, for first beta version. Um, it just needs one particular change in the um, in the uh, in in the Tymno libraries. Okay, and then um, uh, we have a question from uh, Nadim about uh, is Timdil uh, an interpretation language like of TMSL or JSON or how? Uh, how is how does that work? I'm not quite sure how to read that question, to be honest. Okay. Um, but um, if I explain what it does, then maybe that that will sort of um, resolve things. Um, Gabi, there we go. Thank you, Fess. Um, I'm so I'm, I'm I'm really really embarrassed because uh, I like Gabi a lot and uh, we actually just met up um, uh, two days ago in 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 Germany and uh, so I really should not have <laughs> forgotten her name. Um, I'm sorry, Gabi. I hope um, you you don't see that. <laughs> um, right. Um, so. It, all right, so, so try to think a bit like a computer, right? So mm -hmm. if you've got a, a tabular model, um, it's basically sort of something that's in memory, you know, that has sort of a certain binary definition with respect to all your tables and expressions and columns and whatnot, right? Um, and so um, if you then want to 
want to be able to put it in source control or if you want to be able to share it with someone else, you need a way to turn that binary representation into something that is sort of text-based, right? So we called it serialization. Um, mm. And uh, uh, th the other way, sort of taking something that's in a text representation and sort of bringing it uh, sort of into something a computer can make sense of, that's deserialization. Um, and um, Timsel is a way to serialize a tabular model in the same way as Timsel is, right? So in, in that respect, Timsel and Timsel are completely sort of equivalent. Um, they, from a conceptual point of view, they do the same thing. They allow you to basically create a file representation of all your model metadata. Uh, if you think that, if you would call that interpretation, then yes, but I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't use that term. Okay. All right. Um, and then two other questions quick. Uh, Darian Davis, uh, and I don't know why this isn't popping up in my queue, so I can't display it, but he's on LinkedIn and he's asking, um, how, how much does the Tyndall fo folder structure match with uh, a PBIP folder structure? Is that like exactly how that's working or how does that all go? Um, they don't match at all because they do different things. <laughs> um so uh right so so the ppip um is to separate uh, your report from your uh, okay so, keep going so, keep going so so that was that was just announced a week ago so it's the new power bi developer mode uh it's it's one of those sort of big things that are happening this year for pro developers you know timdle being the first one Power BI developer mode uh, uh, and, and um, Fabric Git integration. Those were number two and three. Um, and um, what PBIP does is to basically uh, give you a folder structure for what used to be a PBIX file, right? So that contains uh, your report definition and your model. Uh, or if, if you have a live connection to a remote model, it, it contains a connection string, right? Um, so um, and in, in that respect, um, they're doing tif different things. Right. However, if you happen to have, um, a PBIX project, uh, that contains a model, um, that model can be represented using Timdle, right? Cause that's the whole point of Timdle. Uh, uh, can you still hear me? Yeah. Uh, oh. cause you, you're frozen right now. So, uh, <laughs> just want to make sure. Uh, you can hear me. Can, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear. You. Yeah, uh, can okay. I? Can I keep going? Um, keep going. Uh, in fact, we'll go with you and screen. Okay. All right. So um, now, currently, if you have a model in uh, in in your project, you only get a single BIM file out of it, uh, which is basically Timsel, right? Um, the team is working very very hard behind the scenes um uh, and it's it's a it's a it's a top priority right now uh for that bim file um to be replaced by the timdo folder um so basically just coming back to the question the timdo folder structure is going to be a subset of your pbip folder structure but they're not the same oh you're moving again very good all right <laughs> And you can hear me, yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good deal. Good deal. <laughs> oh, over there now. <laughs> good for a second second camera. Okay. Um I'm sorry, I was why don't I show some stuff? Yes, um, let's get into what? some code. That'd be great. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, so I'm gonna go to VS Code. Um, here we go. Um I've got I've got a project already open. And um, you can also see uh, this one is uh, this one has a single model.bim file, right? So this is Timsel, as we were uh, discussing earlier. And um, you can see there's a hierarchical structure here. So I've got a model at the top. I've got tables. I've got my customer table. That one has various columns and partitions and whatnot. Um, Okay, cool. So if you've ever looked into uh, BIM before, uh, this is going to be very familiar to you. What I can do now is I can um, 
actually open this one up in Tableau Editor. I'm just going to copy the path and I'm going to go and uh, open. Here we go. So now I've got Tabular Editor and it has my model loaded. You can't really see much, but uh, once I start um, ex uh, band expanding things here, you can see I've got um, tables and uh, yeah that's contoso right so that's pretty much the same uh, example uh, we've had before uh, i've got various columns here i've got um, a partition the partition uh, contains some m code um, and in my sales table i've got some measures uh, fairly simple here we go so i've got some dax code as well um so uh cool so that's what we're getting um from uh, that BIM file. And we basically need tabular editor in order to sort of make that navigable and, and uh, uh, sort of make sense of it. Now, um, tabular editor as of uh, the last minor version 2.18, so I'm using 2.19 here, um, already has support for Tyndall. So what I can do now is I can actually go here um, and I can do save to folder. And, um, uh, because uh, tabular editor um, uh, before Timdo came along, pretty much invented the whole concept of save to folder. Um, you have now have a choice um, and you need to go into preferences, uh, serialization, and you need to basically select, do I, do I want to go with the legacy database.json, which is pretty much uh, proprietary tabular editor only, or do I want to go with Timdo and, um, in that case, um, what you're getting is a format that is not proprietary, a format that is uh, supported uh, and maintained by Microsoft, and uh, which is completely interchangeable between any tool uh, that uh, su supports um, uh, Tyndall. Uh, and um, uh, moving forward, you know, we already talked about PBIP. Uh, all Microsoft BI tooling will be based on Tyndall moving forward for models. So with that change, I can now go and say save to folder and um, I'm going to create a subfolder called model. And, um, uh, and right, that's it. Not much has happened. But if I go in here now, there we go. Look at that. Now I've got my Tyndall mm -hmm. folder and now we can actually see um, uh, for instance, in you know, without using any tooling, without going into tablet editor or, or desktop or whatnot, I know which tables there are because they're all you know a file, right? And in here, um, if I go into customer, uh, I can see that look at that, uh, this is my M expression, right? Uh, we just saw that, um, and it's um, something which I've got uh, direct access to. And if I feel brave enough, I can go and make changes here, right? Um, and um, uh, I can uh, do the same thing going to my sales table, uh, looking at my various DAX expressions, right? Uh, the, the ones we were just looking at, here we go, right? Sales amount, uh, I've got the sum X expression. Um, so this is the new world of Tyndall and uh, hopefully, you immediately see how that's massively different and how that enables um, workflows, uh, you know, th that uh, use uh, files and and uh, uh, sort of text-based definitions and and uh, rich tooling uh, that professional developers in other contexts, you know, mm -hmm. have been using for decades, right? Uh, so now the Power BI developers are finally on par with them and uh, can use the exact same rich uh, tool set. Um, and one thing also to point out, you can see some lovely coloring here, right? Um, this is actually the VS Code extension that some of the people were asking a few minutes ago. Um, obviously, I've got a private version of that. and. Uh, <laughs> um, um, uh, so and, do we have uh, a date? And, and people people have seen that in various demos, but everyone understandably is very keen right now to get their hands on it, right? So um, by mid-July is my uh, estimate right now. Um, 
and um all right well we're gonna hold you to that and uh, yeah there, no i mean we we discussed it extensively earlier this week so i'm, I'm pretty comfortable okay with that. All, All right, right. Awesome. Awesome. So we do have a couple questions uh, in sure. the queue. Let, let's get to those. Uh, so we have Daryl Lynch on LinkedIn has asked, um, hey, when using a, a text-based query editor on a report with a live connection model, will IntelliSense for DAX work? When using a text-based editor on a report with a live connection model, will IntelliSense for DAX work? So I'm going to, I'm reading this and Daryl, you can comment if I've got this right or not. Yeah. Um, if I'm working in tabular editor two or tabular editor three to do this editing and to make these changes, will IntelliSense work in, in those? And to that, you'd say yes. Uh, but if you're working in VS Code with a Tyndale editor, will IntelliSense work in VS Code? Well, um, I, well, the, the thing that stands me a little bit is his question around uh, uh, editor on a report, right? Um, so I, I don't think he is actually talking about um, model editing or model development at all. I think he's talking about reports here. Um, so basically, the other bit that in a PBIP, uh, you know, in in a developer mode project will be emitted. Uh, reports currently. Um, I can probably bring up an example as well, but um, uh, in fact, um, why don't I do that? Um, so I, I actually happen to have um, a, um, a a project open here in desktop, right? And so well, looky here. Are you planting people in the audience, Harold? <laughs> you know Matthias. Um, so if I do um, save as and then go here and here and here and if i say uh, pbip um and um just call that i don't know live connection right um so what am i getting now oops sorry that was very silly uh <laughs> i uh, um I did not want a PPIX file. I actually wanted to change that to PPIP. There we go. That makes much more sense. Um, yeah. Here we go. Um, so now I'm getting something that's interesting. Um, so um, specifically this one here, right? So this is my this is my PPIP project. Uh, it's basically everything that I'm highlighting now, right? So I've got. I've got the uh, entry file PBIP, which is pretty much just a pointer. And then I've got a subfolder, which represents all the artifacts relating to my report. Um, and specifically, I've got the report.json file here. That pretty much defines um, everything uh, that def um, relates to my visuals and pages and, and all of that, right? And um, so right now, as you can see, that is JSON, but uh, this is not um, ready uh, for anyone to get their hands dirty with it. Uh, you know, the, the formats are not defined. Uh, they are not um, uh, open for edits. And most importantly, um, there is lots of uh, nesting and embedding of JSON going on. So this isn't even using a format that you could easily make edits with, right? So this is a this is out of scope for what we're talking about today. Although I know it's a it's a huge ask by many people in the community, um, and um, uh, so no. Uh, there is, isn't even anything sort of uh, planned with respect to the VS Code extension, right? The VS Code extension we're talking about here is solely for uh, Timdle. It's it's solely for files with a, a TMD or TMDL extension um, to basically support uh, the Timdle specific syntax. Um, and um, initially, we won't even have any IntelliSense here. Initially, uh, we will just have syntax highlighting. Um, uh, everything else um, relies on contributions and funding. Uh, yeah. Sure, sure. And I, I think that makes good sense. Um, uh, I've got a question that I want to make. I, I, selfishly, I'm going to ask. Uh, um, uh, so one of the big challenges that I've always had when it comes to larger teams 
working in code is we typically got have our data engineers they're working on tasks and activities to to you know build out our pipelines load our data into uh uh into like that gold layer or that you know that we're going to then import into like the diamond layer right where which is code managed here um and then we have engineers that manage the uh the analytical model right the challenge comes when people start making changes to those underlying tables and start adding in new fields and adding in or or even changing a data type right so they they Data engineers deploy their changes. Oh, my dev and QA break. Uh, now we have to, you know, go and adjust that. Can we leverage Timdel, uh, in you know, to, uh, you know, I mean, presuming I could see the changes coming in from my uh, CIC and DevOps for my data engineers, and I can extract that they're adding some columns or they're changing data types on columns. Can I use Timdel to apply those same changes? Uh, to my downstream model does it has have you thought about that is that something that we can do well so i mean tyndall is is a very sort of fundamental and, and low level capability right mm -hmm. it's it, it's really just about um how do i sort of turn a, a model into source code and how can i manage it using you know normal source control systems um, I think what you're talking about is more high level functionality on top of that, right? Yeah. Um, which if you're asking, can you, uh, yes, you can, but, okay. um, but it's you have to figure out how to get there, yeah. right? Yeah, right, uh, right? So the, 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 sort of, that's a, that's a layer of tooling that, um, doesn't okay. exist in a way, but okay. it's something that's something which sort of the Microsoft team wants to enable, right? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously. I was talking about a new openness earlier. Um, investing into into you know something like Timdel and and developer mode ultimately allows you know very interesting external tools uh, to come up that previously wouldn't have been possible, right? Sure. So uh, this year, I think we're going to see sort of lots of interesting releases coming you know from the product team. After this year, I would expect very interesting innovations that build on top of that, right? So, uh, it, you know, if you're in the Power BI world, uh, it, your excitement levels are not going to go down for a while. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Excellent. And, and, and that's what I thought. I just I was just wondering if there were any features like, hey, I'm thinking about my Python notebooks. I'm gonna, my data engines are going to use. Mm. Be fantastic if there was thoughts on the end, like, oh, and we're working on. But uh, I, we could do that development ourselves. That's fine. Um, but if you don't mind, why mm -hmm. don't I show you in practice sort of what um, you know the, the the collaborative aspect and and seeing diffs and being able to actually track changes uh, looks like uh, with well, a very simple do example. It. right so since i'm here um what i'm going to do is um well first of all i'm going to throw this away because we don't need this anymore um and secondly i'm going to commit uh, this entire model folder which is basically my timber definition because once once it's committed and I then apply further changes to it. I'm going to see, you know, by the power of Git, um, uh, only the, the, the small snippets that actually have changed, right? Cool. So basically saved as Kindle. Let's call it that. And um, now I'm good. And uh, this whole folder is under source control. If I now go back here, which is which obviously still has the exact same model loaded, right? And I'm just going to make um, a um, minor uh, change. Uh, let's uh, let's do uh, le le let's put a description on on a customer table if that's okay. Um, sure. And just say contains all Contoso customers, old and new. There we go. Right, just uh, something silly. Um, and um, if I now go and do safest folder again, it still has um, the uh, 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 path in here. So all I need to do is to basically confirm. And now I go in here 
And and this, this is actually where the magic happens. Right? So now is when I'm getting the benefits because now it's telling me, look at that, that my customer table has had a change and it's actually telling me precisely what the change was. Namely, um, one, oopsie, sorry, um, uh, namely one line was inserted, right? So the previous version uh, didn't have that line. This version actually now has on top of my table definition has the special syntax, uh, which Tyndall uh, brings us for descriptions explicitly to make it easier and, and, uh, and and uh, to encourage all our model developers out there to actually put bloody descriptions, you know, on their tables and measures ah. and columns. Um, so so this is me showing two things, right? First of all, um, the uh, uh, native support for descriptions. Secondly, uh, how you can actually get diffs um, uh, and how making one change. Um, uh, gives you a very very tiny and 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 well scoped um change uh which in the Timsel world may not have been the case in the Timsel world even small changes may have sort of ended up in in lots of um uh, apparent uh, uh changes right so there we go oh uh, it you know honestly it's almost like uh well duh right like like why wasn't it like this to, from the get-go you know this it just it just makes sense right there we go cool so i committed yeah. that now and um uh, uh yeah any other questions before i uh, uh so we do here? have we do have a couple other questions let's uh let's quick hit on those uh hold on let's see here um uh Alt Enter is asking, is this a license we pay for? No, no, no. absolutely not. Right. So let me go here. Uh, yeah, right. So sorry, uh, just no plugging PBI tools. Uh, no, um, uh, what I was going to show oh. is, um, uh, and maybe we should have started with that, because obviously um, uh, we need to clarify, Timdal is something that comes from Microsoft, right? Mm -hmm. And so you can actually see, right, on learn.microsoft.com, if you go to the analysis service documentation, which is basically the, the, the back end that uh, powers Power BI, um, um, you can see that there's a dedicated section um, for Timdal, um, which you know, is showing up right next to Timzo, right? Um, and uh, so that's a Microsoft product or it's 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 a feature, right? Which is uh, basically part of um, Power BI. Um, I'm talking about it because um, I actually contributed the feature as an as a community contributor, right? So I'm not with Microsoft. Uh, I'm uh, I, I can't speak for them uh, uh, or on behalf of them, but uh, I uh, I was um, very fortunate that uh, the the product team is uh, extremely open and and sort of keen to invite external ideas. And uh, uh, as I said before, right, um, uh, the ability to source control Power BI projects has been sort of my passion for so many years now. Um, so it was just fantastic being able to actually come up with this idea and execute it and ultimately actually have it shipped by Microsoft, right? So you don't need a license, you get it wherever you have Power BI today. Uh, and, and honestly, fantastic work with this man. Just, just great, great job. Uh, you, you know what? Actually, this this even um, uh, this plays into another question, and maybe I shouldn't have stopped sharing because I bet you're going to say, "Let's go back to my screen right now." But you know that cast that die is cast. So uh, we've had a question in the queue from Hermant. Uh, when is PBI Tools going to be supporting PBIP? Uh, can we use PBI Tools to deploy PBIP in the service via Azure pipelines? Is that something that is in the works? Um, well, virtually before I came onto this uh, stream, I was working on that. So this, this is this is the one thing that I'm uh, very actively working on right now, and I'm planning to have this uh, within days, um, because um, 
yeah uh, uh it's yet another sort of gap uh in in the microsoft tooling right so they release pbip in, in dev mode but it's very early days there's limited tooling mm -hmm. um uh i want to help with pbi tools uh you know giving people the ability to convert back and forth and actually deploy um uh, PBIP projects um, whilst Microsoft is sorting out their stuff, right? I, uh, I know it's on their roadmap, but it's just going to take uh, a lot longer. Well, to that point, right? Like you think if, if you've ever worked at a large enterprise, big teams moving things go through all sorts of processes and, you know, even small things can seem like they take forever. An individual like yourself who really knows his stuff and is, has a strong, solid background in this, you know, yeah, you sit down for like, you know, a few hours, you can crank out some amazing things that maybe it's not the way the enterprise would do it or will do it, but it, it is, it meets, you know, 90, 95 plus percent of what needs, it, what it needs to do. So that, thank you so much for that. And uh, you guys heard it here first. That is a new feature coming to Power BI tools. So exciting stuff. Um. And then uh, we do have a question that's been kind of out there. I think this is out and available, but uh, be able to save it into Timdel. Is that going to be available in TE2 and TE3, or is it just in TE3, tabular area? Well, I've been using TE2, right? And um, okay. uh, so as you can see, that supports it. TE3 also supports it. Um, both of them do. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So that, I mean, that is what we like to hear, right? Like, you, you know, uh, any any changes like this, which are foundational, right? And as you said, it it's supported by Microsoft. This is part of the product. This is, what, this is what we have going forward. Just because it was citizen contributed doesn't mean it's not something that is going to be out there. And almost, I bet that's better for you, right? Then, you know, you feel far fewer support calls when mm -hmm. you yeah. know, something doesn't exactly. work, right? I can focus on the nice things, you know, inventing something. Microsoft, they're, they're going to have to do the support. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Um, uh, sorry. I'm, I'm still heavily involved, and there's still some bug fixes, and, and sure. uh, uh, there's still a backlog of additional things we want to do. Um, so, well, uh, and, and actually that leads us to a tough question. Can you handle a tough question? Oh, always. Oh, all right. And so, uh, I feel like we're like, uh, I always like to hold the tough questions to the end in case, you know, cause you know, don't want to throw you sit. off. That's what I'm yeah, ready yeah, for yeah. yeah. All right. Um, uh, this is a tough question. And again, uh, some of my LinkedIn, uh, questions aren't coming through as they should. So apologies on that. And it looks like it. Uh, who posted it disappeared off LinkedIn, but I'm going to ask it because I think this is an important question too. Uh, so Matthias, you know, Tim Dill better than anyone else. You're the creator of it. Uh, you know, people are going to take this and carry this forward. What features that you would like there to be in Tim Dill don't exist today uh, that you're hoping to uh, get added to Tim Dill in the future? Well, uh, um, so one I'm personally very keen on, and I've, I've fought some wars, uh, no, uh, I've fought some battles, but um, the, the war is undecided, um, <laughs> um, is, um, is the ability for external tools to actually customize this structure, right? So as I said um, today, you're getting this very uh, folder structure, mm -hmm. you know, with the tables and cultures and roles and data sources subfolder and the model expressions and relationships file. That that's what you're getting um, uh, out of the box and by default, uh, and um, no choices are possible, right? And um, uh, that obviously gives you uh, incredible uh consistency across uh tool chains and products but um it also is limiting uh when it comes to you know specific use cases uh particular particularly complex models um and um 
uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very keen and it's, it is definitely acknowledged by the team that, you know, that, that is a feature, uh, that is valid. Uh, it's just not clear sort of, um, when it will be publicly available and in what form or shape. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's what I quite like. Um, Everything else, as far as Timnil, the language is concerned, I'm very happy with. And, uh, you know, uh, it's been a lot of thought and work has gone into it. So uh, I think this is the right thing. Um, everything else will have to happen in the tooling space. You know, uh, okay. we were talking VS Code extension earlier. There's huge scope for, <laughs> uh, you know, rich features to be added to that. Um, and um, uh, the idea is that the VS Code extension will be made available under a um, open source uh, community license uh, um, released by Microsoft on GitHub, uh, uh, and it will invite con uh, community contributions. So uh, uh, I'm hoping, you know, that some uh, smart folks uh, out there in the community, you know, will take an interest in it and actually contribute their feature. Well, that's fantastic. Um, and then I, I guess we have one comment here from Kyle. He's saying, uh, you know, the PBI tool. Oh, actually, it's a response to let's back right. it up here. Uh, oh, gosh, bless it. Everyone's moving too quickly now. Um, uh, Alt Enter is asking, what's PBI tools? And uh, Kyle was responding. Oh, directly. I see. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Command yeah very tool. good. Cool. Uh, that, that would be a whole uh, different talk, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, we have four minutes left. And so uh, jumping into what is PBI tools is probably uh, a longer conversation. But Matthias, you are the uh, the, the creator of PBI tools. Do you want to uh, show the URL and, and share that for people where they can go to, to connect? And Yes, I've got three things to, to share, oh. if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, um, please go. Yes, what, whatever so we got to First of all, if you want to learn about PBI tools, it's pbi.tools. Um, there we go. And um, uh, the other thing which I mentioned earlier, if you do uh, go to pbi.tools slash uh, YouTube, this and you get to a, a playlist which currently has 47 videos all well, lots of me in there uh, including gabi again i'm i'm very i really apologize to you gabi uh, <laughs> uh she's right here and rightly so um so if you want to learn about pbi tools there's loads of stuff to catch up on um tutorials and 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 um, conference presentations and stuff like that. Um, and um, the other thing I wanted to show was uh, I've, I've done a little summary slide here which we can uh, which which I can share um, later on sure. uh, which pretty much um, uh, explain uh, summarizes you know all the sort of main bits and pieces around Timdo and and mm -hmm. has some links as well. And uh, if you don't mind, I've got um, this slide with upcoming presentations because I've got quite a few things in the diary. Um, wow. um, so uh, yeah, that, that'll be in the slide deck as well. If anyone um, wants to see or hear more, I'm, I'm doing an in-person in London at the now Fabric user group, used to be the Power BI user group, um, talking uh, about uh, all the changes around source control. So we're also going to look into developer mode quite a bit there. Um, uh, ben um, is going to host me in a week's time, a uh, Power BI Guy podcast. Um, so yeah, quite a few things here. Um, but um, if there's one thing to point out, um, I would say it's um, Power BI Next Step, mm. where Rui, once again, who is the... Uh, Microsoft uh, PM for Timdal and developer mode and all all good things that are happening now. Um, and myself, we're, we're jointly going to do a pre-con um, on Power BI source control. Uh, a full day, um, September 21st uh, in Copenhagen. There are still tickets available. And um, it's going to be great because there's so much new content out there. And this is going to help people, uh, you know, to learn straight 
from the, the people who were very much involved in in, in making a lot of this um how you know how to how to use it all and how to get started wow that is fantastic so if you're at all in the in europe or whatnot and you're a pro dev that's a day you've got to attend or if you're thinking about being a pro dev that is a must attend oh man i wish i didn't hate flying god i hate travel <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm the opposite. <laughs> oh yeah oh well, good for you that's great um i like my cave here so <laughs> awesome 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 well thank you so much um uh matthias thank you so much for taking time out of your day uh for joining us and running through this incredible uh you know tim deal that you created and thank you for, for taking time out of your life to create that right like i know the amount of time and energy you must have put into that the countless meetings we really appreciate it this is fantastic thank you so much well thanks for having me it's been a great pleasure i really enjoyed it and um yeah it was fun answering all the questions as well um hopefully people you know got something um, out of it I know I did. I think the people in the chat did. So um, uh, thank you. Uh, and, and, and thank you, 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 the people who have tuned, tuned into this. We really appreciate it. You know, uh, you know, now I learned a lot from Matthias because I didn't know a lot about Tim Dill before this, but we're here really, we do this for you, uh, you know, because we love technology. We love to help people, you know, get that hand up, get that leg up, you know, become that data god that I know you can you can be. Um, so join us here every Wednesday at noon. We're going to be going through new capabilities, new functionality. Next week, we have a whole session on CICD. So make sure you join that. And then uh, also on Fridays, we've got uh, Fabric Fridays. Uh, me and Kevin uh, uh, will sit down and go through fabric you know, capabilities and items that are out there. This week, I got the Power BI guys, or I'm sorry. No, they have a name. What's their Tiny name? Cube? No, no, no. No? Nope. Uh, not that lucky. Um, <laughs> uh, it is, uh, bu -bu 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 I just updated, Gaston, Power, Power Mates, Power Mates. Oh. Uh, um, uh, they're going to be on this Friday, uh, you know, helping us see how fabric and power apps work together. So that's really exciting. But um, thank you guys so much for everything. Have a great day. Peace. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.